Okay, I'm making this video because I'm going to prove from the Greek that the, the, the Antichrist is revealed before the rapture, okay? So now there's this word called herpazo. It means catching away, all right? I'm going to show you all the times it's used in the New Testament. Paul uses the word... Okay, John uses it once to mean a catching away. Paul uses it twice. And then I believe it's um, Luke who wrote the book of Acts uses it. Okay? So we'll first start with the book of Acts. 839, this is Philip. Um, he goes to the... Uh, there. He's led by an angel and... Uh, to go down to a certain road and then he sees the Ethiopian eunuch and he he shares the Lord and shares Jesus with the eunuch and then he baptizes the eunuch in water and then he's raptured so I'm going to read that when they came out up out of the water the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again but uh but when on his but went on his way rejoicing okay and where it says the lord suddenly took philip away that's the word harpazo or herpatse okay corinthians uh second corinthians chapter 12 It says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. That word caught up is the same word harpazo or what we call rapture. So we see Philip was raptured. Paul talked. So, so who, the writer of the book of um, Acts uses the word harpazo, which is raptured. Okay. And this is Paul uses the same word, okay, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, or verse 2. Now, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says, After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? Other versions of the Bible say, we who are alive and remain. And the Lord once spoke to me and said, "You, those, when the rapture happens, those who are still alive, meaning alive and have not yet been put to death for their faith, and remain, remain faithful to Jesus. And those are two different verses of scriptures. We who are alive and remain. And then um, the Bible talks about when the rapture happens, uh, it'll be in the midst of persecution and martyrs. And that... Uh, and uh, those who remain faithful and stand firm in their faith and remain faithful. Okay, so those who are alive and remain will be caught up, herpatsoed, or raptured up to meet him in the air. Then John, the apostle, uses the same word, but it's a past tense, meaning was caught up, um, whereas the other verses of Scripture use... Uh, will be caught up. And this is in chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Where it says, um, She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. Now, if that's talking about Jesus... Remember, he died on the cross and went through great suffering and then was snatched up. And that word snatched up is herposte, okay? Herposte, which means catching up. It's the same as rapture. Now, how does this prove that the mark of the, or that the, the, the Antichrist is revealed? Now, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, listen, this is very important. He says, do not let anyone deceive you in any way for that day. The rapture will not come until first there be an apostasy. 
until first there be an apostasy and the man of sin, the Antichrist, is revealed. Now, Paul uses the word apostasy, whereas twice in the past he used the word herpazo, which means rapture. John used the word herpazte, which means was raptured. And, and uh, the writer of the book of Acts, I believe it's Luke, used the word herpazo. So all of a sudden, Paul's going to change everybody's vocabulary and change the meaning of the word apostasy? The word apostasy is used in Acts chapter 21, verse 21, to indicate a changing of doctrine or a falling away from doctrine. And you have false teachers who are teaching that the word apostasy means rapture. In other words, they're trying to lie to you. Let me tell you what happens. Before the rapture, the Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Verse 7 and 8, the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the great falls. Verse 9 through 11, the mark of the beast comes out. Verse 12, this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness. Verse 13, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Verse 14, the rapture. Verse 15, the rapture. Verse 16 through 20, or verse 14 through 20 is the rapture. I saw an angel seated on a white cloud he had a sharp sickle in his hand then another angel came out of the temple and with a loud voice said take your sickle and reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe and the angel swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested that's the rapture Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 says, Do not let anyone deceive you by any means. For that day the rapture will not come until first there be an apostasy or a changing of doctrine, a falling away, and the man of sin is revealed. The Antichrist is revealed. They both say the same thing. Revelation says the same thing. Revelation 14 verse 6 through 20 says the same exact thing as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. But you have these lying teachers who are going to try to tell you it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. Where it, I'm telling, or what they're trying to tell you it is a pre-tribulation when it's not. And they're all going to fall away. They're lying teachers. They're false teachers in the end of the age. And I just proved from the Greek. From the original Greek. So, unless you want to go back in time and slap Paul around, beat him up, and tell him, to, I'm going to make you change that. I'm going to make you change 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. I'm just saying, you're a bunch of false teachers. 